Well, blessing, folks. The time was at hand when the northern kingdom of Israel was about to be hauled out of the captivity forevermore as the nation, northern kingdom of Israel at least. Be certain that you read Hosea 8 right here. We're going to focus on the first six verses just where we have a little more time today to see what's going on. And so the word of the Lord came and said, put the trumpet to your lips. And this is probably a proclamation of Hosea telling Hosea to take that shofar trumpet and to blow that thing. Uh, it was used as a warning device, okay, in several different ways. Also used as worship, but here primarily as a warning device to the, uh, to the nation of Israel to tell them that an enemy comes against the house of the Lord. Now, it's not talking about the house of the Lord, the actual temple down in Jerusalem, but he's using the phrase house of the Lord to refer to Israel in the northern kingdom because the people, the Lord looked upon them as the house of the Lord. And he says, here's why. It's because you have transgressed my covenant and you've rebelled against my law. Now, we've seen this repeated over and over in Hosea and many other portions of the scripture. Remember, Hosea was written over a long period of time. When we read it, we think he's just saying it right here, right now. Could have been long periods between when he said these things, okay? And so here's what they said. They said, well, we cry out to God, my God, we of Israel know you. Here we do the same thing today. They knew him, yeah. They knew of him, but they rejected him. They knew him from a historical perspective. They knew him from a traditional perspective. But they did not know him. I'm reminded of what Jesus says over Matthew 7. You know the passage I'm talking about where he says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not? And they, this little litany of things. And Jesus said, I never knew you. And so let him who has ears hear. And so here's what the proclamation was. The enemy was coming. And just to give an example, one thing they had done, Israel had set up kings, but not by God, not by the leadership or instruction of God. They had appointed princesses, but God knew not of it. <coughs> Doesn't mean he didn't know they did it. He's saying, I didn't lead them in this. And they made idols for themselves of silver and gold. And he says, because of this, God says, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to reject your calf, O Samaria. Remember uh, Jeroboam the first has set up a whole false system of worship, and that's what God's speaking of. They had a golden calf in the north in Dan, and a golden calf in the south at Bethel. He says, I'm going to reject this thing. How long will you be incapable of innocence? What a question. He said, don't you realize that a craftsman made this? So it's not God. It's going to be broken to pieces. And so we come to the same thing. How long will we declare that we know you, God, yet we reject him? How long will we do what they do, did and cling to our man-made idols. You know, I started to list a list of man-made idols. I thought, no, no. The Lord will put his finger upon that which is in your life, which is a man-made idol. Okay, Listen to him, see what he says. Repent, confess, lest we reap the same thing that they are about to reap. We'll see that in our next time together. I'll see you then.